All right, um, Barrister Free, you know, I asked that particular question um, intentional because there's this report about, you know, proxies and, of course, the PDM loyalists and all of that. Well, you know, it's going to be a long read. So you have to relax and be on this read um, with with me, all right? You would, we would go through it together so that when I come back, I'll ask you some questions. I'm sure about that when I return, you would even has you would have some very pressing pressing um, comments to make. Meanwhile, all Amazonians on the home front, you've heard it from Barry Stefu, you need to follow the right ASA so that you will be safe. They are there to save, protect, and ensure that you are on the right track. But then, Araba doubles down on his evil projects, that's mass execution of civilians. Remember on Tuesday, we reported that the ASA IED had missed its target a development that was not surprising given the complexities of the war and the ASA ethical stance. The ASA has consistently targeted only Law Republic to Cameroon armored cars and in the recent incident involving Tokando, the Law Republic to Cameroon army attempted to use civilians as human shields, suspecting an IED attack. Remember, we gave you that report last week, and we gave you the international um, standard of that particular report condemning that act. You don't use humans as shields, remember. Now, however, in a bizarre turn of events, Law Republic to Cameron Proxy Media Outlet, Mini Melfo, has reported that Choyaber has claimed responsibility for targeting civilians. Well, we find this claim ridiculous and unsubstantiated, even in the context of war or revolutionary reporting. A closer examination of Cho Ayaba's credibility reveals a pattern of false claim. In February, for instance, he claimed responsibility for an IED explosion in Indu, only for it to be later discovered that the bomb was planted by CPDM loyalist Ngala Gerald. And that particular bomb explosion affected civilians. Now, Joe Ayaba is claiming responsibility for another explosive to get in civilians, which is difficult to believe given his history and historical claim of falsehood. Moreover, CPDM loyalists, the Bs, and the ADF have demonstrated a pattern of collaboration in their activities on the home front. Well, another report indicates that the Bs were responsible for the same IED attack, consistent with their previous actions of using civilians as human shields to prevent an IED hit, as seen in Bui. This is a serious war crime. But that's, by the way, in response to Cho Ayaba's claim, Marcus F. Abendon has offered a critic that has caught our attention and we would like to share it with you all. In what he titled, Ayaba doubles down on his evil project, starts mass execution of civilians. He says that Lucas Ayaba leader of the AGOFC and commander-in-chief of the ADF has taken responsibility for the killing in cold blood of three civilians in Ocean, Batibo Momo, County of Ambazonia on Wednesday, the 26th day of June, 2024. I ever claimed that the detonated IED, which blew off the civilian vehicle to get the Law Republic to Cameroon military, but we know otherwise, for over five years running, the separatist leader has protected the same military. He now claims his special squad to get it and missed. Well, in the history of the Amazonian war, the Ocean um, IED detonation of the clear civilian target is the first of its kind. These IED bombs do not detonate under pressure, but are remote detonated to minimize chances of missing targets to zero. It is therefore not possible that Yada's men could have mistaken a small civilian target in a convoy of huge military vehicles or armored cars and trucks. It is, however, not strange that Ayaba's ADF forces struck out the civilian's car, which he claimed was being used as a human shield.
Was that a crime committed by the passengers in the civilian vehicle? ADF squads in Batibo and Bamenda have regularly been involved in the systematic elimination of Ambazonians who express any form of disapproval or dissent against their projects and methods, especially the forceful collections of what Ayaba calls liberation tax. And his recent decision announcing the forceful change of township taxi colors in Ambazonia, but mostly to get them the city of Bamenda. Well, in an audio message circulated yesterday, the 27th of June, Mr. Yaba once again called for an escalation of the conflict on the territory. But his escalation projects are all aimed at extorting money from the people. This time, though, his new target is law Republic Cameron residents in Ambazonia, whom he called upon to pay and stay or leave the territory immediately. Coming on the heels of an AGFC announced forceful imposition of what we can also call useless and meaningless Ambazonian's ID card and international passports, all of which are aimed at extorting money from the impoverished and beleaguered people on the territory. Mr. Yaba clearly seemed to be on a coalition course with the same people he claims to be liberating from the shackles of bondage. The question that Ambazonians at home and abroad have been asking the AGFC leader over the years is how he intends to liberate his people from bondage by subjugating them to even worse treatments than the enemy instead of meeting law Republic Dikimaru military on the battlefield. Well, in the past, Ayaba's Alabukan and Batibo's ADF Brigade have systematically targeted and eliminated the ARFs. Presently, the ASA forces loyal to the Ambazonian government, led by President Samuel Ikemesako, while protecting La Republic of Cameroon forces, to whom his men have over and again granted access into Momo County, while making life difficult for the local population and civilian commuters. In 2019, Mr. Yaba opposed the Swiss initiative advancing all manner of flimsy excuses, including allegations that the Swiss were Paul Beer's friends. Whereas the truth stands that the Swiss mediation had earlier failed to consider him as a principal party on the Ambazonian side, preferring to build the negotiation effort on the Ambazonian side around the then interim government of President Samuel Ikemisako, who was clearly seen to be in charge of the territory and with considerable diplomatic outreaches in his folder. The failure of the Swiss initiative is largely credited to Mr. Yaba and Mr. Yuktabe, whose rejection of the Swiss platform gave Yawunde the reason it needed to pull out, claiming it. We don't know who to negotiate with. Well, strangely, the AGFC registered president at direct talks with La Republic de Cameroon in Canada, sponsors of the Collapse Swiss Initiative, the outcome of which the attendees have since only threatened to release for two years now, but have not been able to. However, we gathered from the grapevine that the so-called Ambazonian leaders agreed to conditions which they could not meet such as ending the war, ghost towns and causing refugees to return to the war turned territory in exchange for negotiation. The question those presidents circle teamed or termed Ambazonian city and civil society delegation to Canada have not been able to answer is why would Yawunde hold negotiations with them or anybody else once the war goes down's end and refugees return home to the territory. From where we stand, Ayaba Cho, his AGFC and allied organizations are all out to torpedo the Ambazonian struggle and not to advance it. All their activities lend credence to this. ADF forces have for over six years not succeeded in killing a single La Republic de Cameroon soldier or neutralizing them. Rather, they have killed 
scores of our best fighters and commanders wiping out and chasing away all ARFs from Momo County in what they call the battle for Momo. Since then, the bees who are clearly seen to be ADF's sister, or better still, Mother Force, have had a field day in Momo where normalcy has all but returned. Throughout Ayaba's ADF's blockade of the Mbengui and Fondong highways, not a single Lowry public to camera military truck was blown off the road. Rather, ADF's fighters waved them and their colonial administration over happily but daily extorted huge amounts of money from desperate civilian commuters who most often underwent and still undergo exorbitant costs to bury their dead or transport their sick to hospitals. What about Ayaba's liberation talk? The blue and white taxi colors project is another ploy to push the people to turn their backs on the struggle while he and his law Republic to Cameron military partners make money. If Ayaba is anything close to the revolutionary leader, war expert, and the diplomat that he claims and Bush to be, he would know that the only way to escalate the ambition of war of independence is to take the fight to the enemy and not to subjugate his people to unwarranted pressures. Ayaba calls on the people to take responsibility, claiming that the diaspora has been involved in street demonstrations over the years. How many of these street demonstrations has Ayaba, his Agosi, organized? And in how many has Ayaba taken part of since 2020? A true freedom fighter has essentially two things to do. Fight to evict the enemy from his territory and the second protect his people but on both counts ayaba has failed woefully well this report is from marcus f abandoned